So <clears throat> um, it's a question titled the Cliff Cannon. <laughs> I, I try to give questions a descriptive title, most, mostly for my purposes. It, um, you can, in most of the cases, ignore question titles. Um, but I do recommend that you read through the description of the question carefully. And what I usually like to do is, as I'm reading through the description of question is, well, I, I want to make sure that I, want to, I understand the physical setup of the situation. So um, you have a cannonball being fired horizontally uh, from a cliff of some height. So what I want to make sure that I do is, well, let's uh, kind of diagram that. It does, uh, drawing diagram, it does two things for me. It, one thing it does is it kind of makes sure that I'm understanding what the question is saying. It's sometimes easy to just read over a question without having understood what it's saying. So um, you have a cannonball that is being fired um, horizontally. Um, it's being fired at some height, um, height uh, cliff of height H. After some time in the air, the cannonball eventually lands some distance R. All right. Um, so I'm given this distance R. I guess R stands for range because that's what it's describing. Horizontally from the base of the cliff. Um, it feels like some kind of description is missing because I was hoping to hear some velocity here and I didn't hear that. So let me just uh, highlight that. And that's one of the things that um, drawing diagrams and spending a little bit of time trying to understand the question does. If it really didn't, if it didn't, if it feels like it didn't include all the necessary information, you will see that as you are, as you are reading the question, as you are drawing the diagram, and that gives you some kind of a hint for what information you might need to watch out for. So it says in part B, the moment that the cannonball lands, it's a final velocity, V final is measured. Okay, good. And it's found to be at an angle theta below the horizontal. All right. In terms of this angle theta, what is the range of the cannonball R? Give your answer, an expression for R, all right? In terms of theta, H, gravitational acceleration G, that's just constant, M, mass of the cannonball. Oh, that doesn't, I mean, I can write it down, but uh, from my knowledge of kinematics, I don't think M will be relevant and any other physical constants needed. Um, and a curiously missing thing in this list is it didn't tell me what uh, free final is either. So I think uh, uh, I don't know what free final is either, just as a matter of um, stating what it didn't give me. So let me just uh, highlight that. Um, um, I don't know free final either. So, Wow, okay, I'm given only theta. So the question like this is uh, challenging. It's uh, challenging specifically in this sense. It, uh, it's unusual. <laughs> I think uh, it's uh, usual for you to be given a situation, especially for projectile motion, and be given a lot of initial conditions, like it's uh, completely standard to be told what your initial velocity is. But to not be told what the initial velocity is and to not be told um, what the final speed is. And I guess you actually don't know what um, a range is because that's the expression that you're trying to write down. And uh, this uh, final landing angle, that is a quite, quite unusual quantity to be given. This is where your mathematical skill will help you. This is a scenario where you are coming in with zero intuition and you are basically being asked to do this question backward. It's like a reciting alphabet backward. The only way you can do that is if you know the alphabet well. 
<laughs> and the only way to do projectile motion backward well is if you feel comfortable uh, working out projectile motion questions. So uh, let me kind of, uh, with having laid all that out, let me approach this question. So really the way to approach it, the um, projectile motion question like this is actually the exact same way you would approach any projectile motion question. You start out by first defining your axis. Most people do that kind of naturally and sometimes implicitly, but it's good to have in your mind that you have um, a horizontal X and vertical Y axis. And just as a reminder for yourself, remember that you have downward acceleration of, um, of minus G, let me write it in a way it won't get confused with other things. And you know the horizontal acceleration is zero. And that, um, that sets up the stage um, for a place where you can write down your kinematics equations. So, um, so let me try to write down some kinematics equations using the variables that are given um, in the kind of order that I think will be relevant. Because if I don't have any kind of guiding principle, I'm just writing down everything under the sun, it's possible that I will write down too many equations. And I want to avoid doing that. So let me um, kind of start from the end in mind. I'm trying to find the range R. So I'm looking for an equation that has something to do with horizontal position. So that would be this one. Uh, the final x position is given by your um, um, initial x component of velocity times time. Um, and I guess um, you can also say plus x naught. But let's make things simple for ourselves. I'm going to just define these positions to be x equal to 0. So, um, so this, uh, with this equation, uh, what I would be writing down is um, my final x position, which would be range r, is equal to my initial x velocity. Oh, it's this initial velocity that I was puzzling that I wasn't given. Well, let me assign a symbol to it and write it down. We not times time. And um, this is a very frustrating expression because here you have one equation and three unknowns. <laughs> you don't know R, you don't know Vina, you don't know time. But it's a starting point. It um, tells you what you need to approach from here on. So, um, all right, I already wrote, wrote down an equation for R. So I think what I need to go hunting for are the other two unknowns, Vina and T. Um, Vina, I have no idea how I'm going to get to that. But I think I do have a kind of an idea uh, what will be relevant for time t. From my experience doing pro dealing with the projectile motion questions, what I do remember is the information for time, time in there, time in air, almost uh, always comes from vertical motion because um, I have some information about the, some distance that it's moving and by tying that with uh, uh, one of the kinematics formulas, I can get to information about time. So let me write some of those down. Um, in fact, I'm given my initial starting height, h. So that seems like a good place. So the kinematics equation I'm thinking of is the y final is equal to y initial plus um, initial y velocity times time. And for projectile motion, minus 1 half g, which reflects this information here times time squared, uh, and both of these are final times. So let me plug in the values for this question, uh, which would be the final height is zero. Uh, I, let me just make that explicit here. Um, so the final height where it ends, the ground, let me call that the zero height. Then um, zero is equal to initial height, h, Initial y velocity, here it's zero because it says it's being uh, fired horizontally. So I must have that information. Um, and so plus zero minus one half g t final squared. 
Oh, also, I guess uh, this equation will actually give me time information right away um, because I have just one unknown um, in this uh, whole equation. So let me actually do that so that um, I don't have extra things cluttering my problem solving. So solving for time there, what I get is t is equal to square root of uh, 2h over g. I did that in my head. Uh, if that was a little bit too quick, pause this recording, work it out for yourself. When you've done that, come back and continue. Um, all right, so I have time. So then I'm still hunting for this v naught. Um, and this is where kind of working from the end, um, you are kind of stuck. Like, what would it give me v naught there? Um, I mean, my first to go to thing would be uh, distance traveled per time, but that is this equation. So that doesn't tell me anything new. Um, so, so this is where you might um, need to look at, so I'm done kind of looking at uh, what, where I need to get to. And what I'm now looking at is what information was I given and how can I use that information? So one piece of information that is given is this angle theta. And um, I'm not using it anywhere yet. So, all right, I, I think I want to use that. Um, how am I gonna use that? Well, let me just start writing down some equation. This is almost like a stream of consciousness or whatever. Uh, now, uh, mind you, uh, limit yourself on how much time you spent doing this in your exam. So in, during the exam, you want to be efficient. Um, so I'm just gonna start, start from this information theta and start thinking of things I can relate to theta. So, you know, if I were trying to look for theta, what I would look at is actually this relationship here because the expression I would be using to find the theta would be arctangent of V final Y over V final X. That's frankly, if someone asked me what is theta, that's what I would be getting at. So I think the one equation I want to write down is, all right, um, the tangent of theta is equal to V final Y over V final X. And that's actually starting to brine up a little bit. If you remember um, this thing about projectile motion, that horizontal acceleration is zero, then you have some initial v naught, and that is going to continue to be my final x component of velocity. So I actually have this uh, v final x. That is my v naught, which um, is not known, but it's at least one of the unknowns that I've already labeled. So I have this uh, one new equation where I am trying to use one of the known quantities and where I had to introduce one new unknown, the final y component of velocity, but at least I didn't have to introduce one whole other new unknown. So, uh, so all right, then I think uh, it's a little bit clearer where my next search needs, needs to go. And then um, that's go looking for relationships that will lead to information about this uh, final y component of velocity. And this is where I hope you realize that we used this equation for uh, y component of motion, but there are other kinematics uh, formulas dealing with the motion that um, that's not this. That's the, that's the uh, final y component of velocity is equal to initial y component of velocity minus gt. So let me use that. Uh, plugging in the numbers for that, um, for that equation that we have in our situation is, well, uh, V final Y, that's uh, one of the labels I've used for unknowns, is equal to the initial Y component of velocity. We are actually given that. 
uh, from saying that it's horizontally fired, we are told that it's zero, minus gt. And uh, this equation is an equation that involves, involves no new unknowns. When you start saying that, you know you are near the end <laughs> of your problem solving setup. So I think I identified all the necessary information. Let me uh, do that, kind of double check that um, I gathered together everything I need before I finish up the algebra and finally answer this question. Um, so I'm gonna count all the independent equations that I have written down. One, and I'm going to count this as my independent equation two, and I'm going to count this is my independent equation three. And finally, this is my independent equation four. Let me um, mark all the unknowns. So I have three unknowns that got introduced right at the beginning. And I'm just gonna start counting any new unknowns I had to introduce. With the second equation, I didn't have to. I just had a T, which I already counted. Uh, with the third equation, uh, theta is known. One of them was already something I counted. So I had V final Y, which is the fourth unknown. And uh, with the fourth equation, no new unknowns. So I have four equations, four unknowns. I can solve it. Now I'm going to go through the rest of the algebra to actually solve this question. Um, so let me do that. So when you're doing algebra, you want to be deliberate and uh, what you want to pay attention to is you want to pay attention to what's the eventual quantity that you are trying to get at. And what you want to be careful there is that that's the last quantity you solve for. Because in each step of solving for a system of equations, uh, usually what you do, and this is what I recommend that you do, is use a substitution to eliminate unknowns. So I already solved one of the equations for T. So a good thing to do is to use that to eliminate T from all my equations. Now, as I'm doing that, one thing I'm hoping you'll realize that the resulting set of equations will basically give you no information about time, T, because I eliminated it. So, so let me uh, write down the cleaned up version of these four equations, eliminating um, time, T. So this, here's the, my version of equation one. That's gonna be R is equal to V naught times, instead of time, I have square root of 2H over G. Good. And equation two, I'm not gonna write that down. I'm using that equation to eliminate time from everything. It'll no longer be in our system of equations. Uh, so uh, it modify the version of equation three. Oh, it doesn't have any time t in it, but let me just clean it up a little bit. So I'm gonna uh, kind of write it out for v final y is equal to v naught times tangent of theta. All right. Uh, modify the version of equation four. I have v final y is equal to equal to um, minus g times the square root of um, square root of 2h over g. Or simplifying it a little bit, it's going to be minus the square root of 2gh. All right. So I have here three equations and three unknowns. I eliminated t time. So all right, so I keep on, uh, keep going. I have um, one, two, three unknowns. And my goal, uh, next goal is to eliminate one of those three unknowns, and it better not be R, <laughs> and um, keep moving on from there. Um, I, I think what I will do is, uh, let me use equation uh, three prime. Uh, because it, well, I actually have two equations that are already solved for um, V final Y. So let me actually do this. Uh, what I will end up doing is setting this equal to that. Um, and this is what you will end up getting when you do that. This becomes V naught tangent of 
theta is equal to minus the square root of 2gh. All right, so this is what was having me pause for a bit. Um, I have positive left-hand side and negative right-hand side. And um, as you are staring at the equation, I hope you eventually uh, realize that the way this equation is written down here, it treats a sign as a meaningful quantity. Uh, your final y velocity is downward, and that's reflected in the sign there. So that's why it's there. And the equation that I wrote down here, if I'm planning on using positive acute angle theta, then this is where I've only written down um, the speed in the y component, uh, where the sign doesn't have any meaning. So that's why you have this uh, apparent kind of clash of signs here. Uh, when you notice something like that, uh, frankly, the kind of choices are up to you, how you want to handle that. Here, I'm just going to make it easy for myself and say that my theta is going to be less than zero. So my tangent of theta will be negative. Um, as long as you are aware of what's going on, that's fine. <laughs> That'll be fine. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, then we do these two equations. My original equation one, I still have that. And my new equation, that's a result of combining equations three and four. I now have two unknowns, R and V naught, and two equations. So what I can now do is solve for the one thing that I don't want, plug that into, into my remaining equation. That'll give me answer for the one remaining thing. So, oh, I'm running out of space here. So let me do it this way here. Um, I can solve this for V naught here. V naught is equal to minus the square root of 2gh over tangent theta. And I can plug that into equation one, yielding, uh, let me just throw arrows as a reminder for myself. R is equal to V naught from there, minus the square root of 2GH over tangent theta um, times square root of 2H over G. And, you know, I do, uh, it's not uh, strictly required. And given the limited time in the exam, I'm will understand if you don't want to simplify this. I just want to encourage you to um, develop your algebra skills um, by working out these, um, uh, doing algebraic simplifications where you see that it can be done. And you will see that it actually simplifies quite a bit. It now becomes minus square root of 2h times 2h is just 2h. So 2h, I have square root of g canceled out by square root of g. So G is gone. Oh, I don't need G. Uh, divided by tangent theta. Tangent theta. And if you want to be sure that I recognize that you are not making a minor mistake of sign error, you can even remind me that theta is negative and tangent theta is negative. So that's it. That's the answer. And uh, as you see, wow, that took quite a bit of time. I think I started on this question at 2.20 and now it's uh, 2.44. And this is what I mean, you want to be efficient during the exam. And, um, you know, I could have done this faster if I wasn't talking and explaining. Um, and I, I, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and uh, during the exam, um, as you are, you know, if you haven't seen this question before, as you are trying to figure it out, it could take you quite a bit of time. Then, um, then what, really what I would encourage you to do is uh, pace yourself. Uh, if you see that, a, you know, this is actually a quite challenging question. If you see that a question is challenging, it could be a good um, judgment to call to skip it for now and then come back to it later when you know you have more time. So, because I've actually only done part A. Um, actually, as far as the pacing goes, each part, ideally, you want to spend only like five minutes. Uh, I let myself spend uh, 25 minutes on part A because I think I know 
uh, I can work out the remainder of the parts uh, relatively quickly once I have part A. So in part B, it asks if the angle theta is found to be 45 degrees, it asks what is the initial speed. And I know one of the equations that I wrote down will be useful in this. So I can use that to write down that my initial speed, and since I'm, um, yeah, yeah, initial speed is equal to minus the square root of 2gh divided by tangent of, and I want to be consistent with my previous convention here, so minus 45 degrees. Tangent of minus 45 degrees should be minus one. So you have um, minus one, canceling out minus one, so square root of 2gh. So that's it, I'm done. Uh, this is one of those odd questions where um, part A is basically the whole question. Um, that's why I let myself spend 25 minutes there. Um, part C says, if the initial speed of the cannonball is fixed at the value you found above, all right, let me write that down as a reminder. V0 is equal to square root of 2gh. The range of the cannonball can be increased by firing the cannonball at some angle above the horizontal. Find an expression for the range R of the cannonball given the initial speed and launch angle of the horizontal. This sounds complicated. So if this were on, well, on the exam, my recommendation is first to skip it and come back to it when you know you have the time. And um, let me see. Oh, actually, I don't think it's actually all that complicated. It's just only saying that the range can be increased. I misunderstood. It's not saying find the maximum range. That would have been complicated. But it's only saying find an expression for the range R. So let me actually write stuff down and see if uh, we can... Um, See if you can do, um, hmm, one second. So yeah, sorry, never mind. Uh, this is where you do have to be careful. So uh, it's a good kind of demonstration on how much you can reuse previous analytical results. And um, so this is a previous analytical result which you might have thought of using, or at least <laughs> I was thinking of using. Um, and this is the previous analytical result, um, minus 2h over tangent theta. And when you are trying to use previous analytical results, um, you have to, Think through uh, carefully, ask yourself um, what one, what conditions are being assumed for that analytical result, and two, have any of those conditions changed? And here's one condition that has definitely changed. One of the conditions that were assumed in the derivation here was that the initial y speed was equal to zero. And with this, that has definitely changed, which means basically every single derivation step for R is actually no longer valid. So you have to work this out from beginning. Um, the good thing is actually this is the more typical uh, projectile motion question. You are given all the initial conditions and you are just uh, being asked to write down an expression for the range R. And, um, my suspicion is that's actually a rather difficult question, but let me actually go ahead and do that so that I can at least uh, show you if it uh, takes long or if it doesn't, let's see. If it's on level ground, then actually you have that easy formula from your textbook, R is equal to, uh, well, I don't think I have that memorized, um, but you, have, you might have the formula. Let me drive it from scratch. So I have a new scenario now 
which is that I have a cannonball which is being launched with some speed of Vina that I know of. And I have some initial angle theta knot that I also know. And I'm being asked for um, expression for range R. Oh, and as before, I still know the height H of the cliff. All right, um, so let me just go through the standard steps for uh, projectile motion questions, which would be, uh, all right, I'm gonna break this down into X and Y component. So my, um, so my initial velocity, it has X component, it has Y component. Um, so I'm just gonna start writing down stuff. So my, I have expression for the horizontal motion, the, the range R that it will travel is equal to um, V naught times cosine theta naught times uh, the time, T final. Um, that's going from X equals zero to the range R. And this T final here is an unknown quantity. And I hope to get that by looking at the Y component of motion. So um, I can write down the position expression, which is the final Y position, zero, is equal to initial Y position, H. And this time I do have initial Y velocity, V naught sine theta naught uh, times T final. And my acceleration is minus one half G T final squared. Um, Oh, so this is a single equation in terms of single unknown. The only thing that makes things complicated is this uh, square, which means you have to use a quadratic formula. And this is already kind of in that form. This is my A, this is my B for the quadratic formula. This is my C for quadratic formula. So the uh, answer for T final will be um, B, that's free naught sine theta naught, actually minus b, v naught sine theta naught plus minus square root of v b squared. So v naught squared sine squared theta naught, naught minus four times a times c. So it's gonna be plus one half g, um, oh, plus four times one half, so two g times h. Okay, that's the thing in the square root divided by two times A. So that's gonna be um, minus two cancels out one half G. All right, uh, this minus sign cancels out the minus sign. And for the cases where it matters, it flips this minus plus, uh, plus minus to minus plus. So um, you do a little bit of staring and realize this is the same thing as this one. So you realize if I'm subtracting here, then I get negative value for time, which is um, what I'm looking for. So, that, so I go with a positive value and uh, that's gonna be my expression for time final is equal to, well, that. So, um, so plugging that into this range formula will get me the expression for range. <laughs> so the range is equal to uh, v naught cosine theta naught, we are allowed to use those, times, and you know, I can try to simplify it, but I don't think it'll really simplify. So let me just do the minimal thing of factoring out g. So I factor out g here, and the thing that's just gonna be inside the parenthesis. v naught sine theta naught plus square root of v naught squared sine squared theta naught plus 2gh. Yeah, so this is a super long question. <laughs> so once again, word of caution, manage your time. If it looks like a difficult question that could use up a lot of your time, make sure you uh, put enough consideration to the other questions. <laughs> um, am I done with the part C? Yeah, I think I'm done with the part C. Um, yeah, I have range in terms of V naught, theta naught, H and G and M and other constants, yeah. <laughs> so actually this part to see would be a kind of more typical projectile motion question 
And uh, as you can see, I didn't have to go a lot of hunting for formulas. And that is really the difference between a typical project car motion question and an atypical difficult to set up like A, where it forces you to do things backward. So you have to spend quite a bit of time hunting for stuff. I think I have one more part to still, part to be, <laughs> give a qualitative description of trajectory which maximizes the R above. And I think the semester when I asked this question, I did realize that really uh, a lot of questions, um, which is difficult question on top of difficult question. Um, so let me just do this much. Um, so what I'm going to do is, um, uh, I'll just give you the answer. The launch angle theta naught that maximizes R is less than 45 degrees. And this is where uh, your intuition helps because um, you might have some intuition that for projectile motion on level ground, that theta not equals 45 degrees is what maximizes that range. And you might even have this sense that, oh yeah, 45 degrees is what balances uh, how fast the, the, the projectile is, mo is moving horizontally with how much initial upward velocity it has so that, so that it has time to uh, spend in the air. So, when you look at this uh, modified setup, what I hope you are thinking through is, okay, we are given some initial height. So how could we spend that in the best way possible? And the best way to spend that is, you know, having that initial height means you are given some additional time in the air. So uh, some of these uh, velocity components can be used instead to, to move faster horizontally instead of using that to spend time in the air. So that means your angle would be less than 45 degrees so that you have more of a horizontal component and you kind of, um, you can afford to spend a little bit less time in the air than you might have had to. So, um, so that's uh, what, uh, what uh, kind of this uh, justification would be. And you can actually mathematically justify it by using this formula and taking derivative of it with respect to theta and actually, but um, you are, you should be out of time to do that. Um, so, wow, okay, that question I spent 45 minutes on. So if I were to put this question on your exam, once again, caveat, I haven't decided on your exam yet. I'll probably have to cut it down significantly. I, I don't think in the spring 2017 when I gave it, I do remember um, <laughs> most people not working through the exam, so um, yeah. Uh, not working through this particular question. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> uh, I think a part A alone is actually a good question. Uh, maybe uh, I just need to figure out how to um, divide that up. 